for so long. We've been here. We've been trying to break. Hi there, and welcome to another interactive and fun filled springboard hangout your springboard hangout is your interactive and fun field program that seeks to learn for enable us to learn as well as hang out with friends that um, are in high places and we learn so much from them my name is comfort okran for today's hangout i can tell you that we are in the you know what they call the ESCO, the next to the chief executives, that's the areas that we are working with. <laughs> and today we have um, uh, Nana Isomfua and Emma, who are both in communications. One is head of the director of marketing and corporate relations at Absign. That is my one and only Nana Isomfua <laughs> Tamaklo. And then Thank next you. to her, we have Emma Winani. She is the she is the chief director for communications and i thought that was an interesting one because i hadn't heard that one before chief director for communications at global media alliance the conversation is all about marketing about pr about communications so don't go anywhere if you have a friend who is who wants to be in that field tell him to, to, tell him or her to come on and if you do have a business where you're wondering what next, what's the next gig that you must do for to enable your business have the top of mind in your among your clients. This is the place to go. Therefore, I invite you. Do let us know where you're you are watching us from. Also share um, our, 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 our page with, with others. And most importantly, please don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. For so long. Welcome back. And I'm sure you were wondering what was that about? Well, last week, you remember we had the Springboard Virtual Convocation. And during the convocation, one of our sponsors, Enterprise Group, gave a whole laptop. And somebody was supposed to win it by downloading the app and answering some questions. And indeed, that was our lucky winner. He came by the offices today to receive his prize. So next time when you're having a Springboard Virtual Convocation or in person, don't forget to enter into the, the program of how to win the prize because you may never know you could be the lucky winner. So we come back to the studios and continue <laughs> our program with Nana Silfoa and Emma, marketing gurus, communication gurus, and uh, we'll hear about where they started from. And then most importantly, we'll learn some nuggets, some really cool nuggets that we can use in our various spaces. So let's start from you, Nana Silfoa. How did it start for you, Nana? Hmm. That's an interesting one. Um, I had actually not planned to be in marketing originally <laughs> because I studied history and law in the university. So you can imagine that this was not my planned um, direction. Okay. But um, when I came back from the UK, I found myself in Nestle. And so in Nestle, when I started my career, I was actually in sales. So I was in sales for well over five years. But there was something extremely very exciting about the marketing aspect that I thought, okay, I've done the sales, I've done the territory, I've done the administrative bits and all of that. Mm. But then create, mm. you know, to create something or see something come to life was mm. more exciting. Because guess what? I did fine art. Okay. Mm. I draw. I can sew. Yeah. So the thing is, I am a creative person. So I found that fact because I was going to do fine art in tech and my father stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> a strict old man stopped he, he, me. He didn't feel there was any future in it for Not you. at all. He wasn't sure I could put food on the table. So um, he switched my subject, by the way, without consulting me. And I did, you know, uh, not uh, challenge him at that time. Yeah. Times are different yeah, now. I know, so, right? <laughs> Um, so I find myself, you know, pulled to marketing because I thought I had a future in there. Mm -hmm. And so I switched and went into brands. And uh, that's been my life. I don't know, consumer services, PR, communication. So that's been my, my, my field since then. And I have a passion for it. I'm a very passionate and a very 
you know, very yeah. agitated on the move person. <laughs> yeah. So there's never a dull moment for me. Never a dull never moment. Never a dull moment. And we'll look at some of the interesting <laughs> moments that have risen and <laughs> as a result of being over 20 years in the marketing field yes. at both Nestle and right now as APSA, yes. as Director of yes. Marketing. So let's look at you, Emma. Um, I'm sure yours was more, you, you knew you were going to be in marketing. And therefore, you just went straight for it. Oh, I wish. But <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's the same strip, script, different cast. Honestly, just like a silver, I, I wouldn't have imagined that I would uh, do communication. Though I, I studied uh, sociology and French in mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I wanted to work with people. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do HR. But my first job after university was at the Nation Media Group in Kenya, back in Kenya, okay. and I was doing marketing. And then we had just launched a business paper called Business Daily. I must say I'm proud to be one of the first employees of Business Daily. And when I see its success, I'm very happy because we started from the street, you know, giving out the paper for free and, you know, getting people to get excited about it. Then I uh, went to the stock exchange where I was doing public relations. And then I was like, nah. I want to see what's in outside Kenya. Okay. And funny enough for me, I'd never thought of really working outside my home country, but I wanted to practice my French. Okay. I think in University of Nairobi, we didn't have the chance of going to study abroad um, to practice the French. So I wanted maybe a West African country, live there, integrate, and then practice it. Okay. Um, but when I was looking at the job descriptions, there was really nothing I could do in those French-speaking countries. But... I saw, a friend of mine referred me to Ghana. I'd been to Ghana before in 2008 to visit. But I guess it's different when you visit and when you come to live here. <laughs> a story for another one, day. One is a oh, my goodness. The other. oh my goodness. The things, things change when you're living in the country. But anyway, so I came to Ghana to do HR. Okay. And then it was for one year. That was the purpose of coming to Ghana for one year, practice HR for one year, get to see how they do it in a different market and then go back home and work. Mm. Lo and behold, it's been 11 years oh. of living in Ghana <laughs> and I practiced HR for five years, did my master's in HR at University of Ghana, proud alumnus. Um, then I was like, nah, there's something missing. I don't want to use the word I got bored because I didn't, but I wanted to start dealing with the other side of the business. Mm. And lucky for me, the company I work with, Global Media Alliance, we are also an agency. Okay. So we do work with different clients. And an opportunity came and there was an opening in the comms side of the business. And my boss was like, instead of uh, leaving us, why don't you move this side? If you don't like it, well, at least you gave it a shot. Best decision I ever made. Oh. Best decision <laughs> I ever made. Um, <laughs> there are sleepless nights, many of them. But they're always worth it. When you see your clients and their campaigns and, you know, behind the scenes, you're like, I was part of it. Mm, it's, mm. it's a proud moment. Mm, I love mm, it. Mm, and mm. I think the, the fun part for me is we get to work with so many different clients from banking to technology to telecoms. So there's no boring day. Like I'm learning so many different things on the job and best decision, like I said. I don't regret it at all. Best decision. Best decision. Best decision. I'm sure you can even say it a thousand times. Times a million. You still go through it. Wow, best decision. So we have, um, but you know the funny thing, interesting, let me say interesting thing. So far we've interviewed about on this series, particular series with the uh, uh, women on the go with mm -hmm. um, um, EWN or mm -hmm. Executive yes. Women's mm -hmm. Network. Network yeah. We've interviewed different ladies and most of them, let me say about 70% said, well, I didn't really start that way. Mm -hmm. But along the line, as, as, I, as, I, as I navigated my corporate life, I found myself yes. into this Practicing space. It. Yeah. And then in the end, I found that that was the best thing I could do yes. for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. So then, in a sense... It's, it's implied, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's true, mm -hmm. um, that finding your, yourself, finding what you are really good at, helps you enjoy that which you, what do. you do. Yes, that's true. 100%. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, personally, mm -hmm. I'm, always, I'm a highly engaged person, mm -hmm. but that's because I've found myself in a space that engages me, I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. As I said, I started in the sales yes. area in the 
But I realized it wasn't as exciting um, for me. But then the opportunity to create. And you know, especially starting my career in a place like Nestle, where you're doing consumer marketing. You know, now I'm doing services marketing. But in consumer marketing, they are tangibles. Yeah. I get to live and breathe products, mm. research and innovation, developing products, mm -hmm. testing them, tasting them, you know, seeing them come to life, packaging, mm -hmm. you know, before you can sell them to the, the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. There are just so many processes that it goes through that it is exciting. That's what I said. There is never a dull moment because this is not an aspect of the product in itself is it what did we say 60-40 hasn't met you know that measurement in terms of if somebody tasted your product blindly mm -hmm. compared to competition we call that the 60-40 test mm. well it if I tasted it blindly let's say if I put peak and ideal milk here and you tasted it will you choose my in a blind test mm -hmm. if you don't pass that you go back to the drawing board and do look at the formulation of your product again. So every single time there was something new, something very exciting, exciting campaigns, like breathing life into products and brands, it's been an exciting journey for me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the way you're saying them breathing life. Breathing into life into products. Into, yes, and, that's yes. true. Is that how you feel about, about market, your, your communications field as well? I think mine is a bit different. Yeah. Um, I guess I still had the beauty of starting with the tangible, tangible. You, can, you can hold it you can see it but with uh, most of the clients that we work with mm -hmm. we services Service. yeah so you're providing services to your end consumer and you need to tell them why they should choose you over another person mm -hmm. they're not seeing mm -hmm. the product some some of the times they're not seeing the product okay if it's a phone maybe phone yeah. companies you can tell them choose this phone it has this versus this mm -hmm. perhaps mm -hmm. but most of the time it's um we have a better network. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know, how did you how did you tell how did you tell that yours is better? You know, but you have to find the right message to tell the people. So you tell them what they understand. If you go to location A, mm -hmm. I work better. So it means my network is good. I can be able to, if um, you're sending, let's say, money to a different, you can see that it's, I'm not charging you. So, of course, you can see that it's, it's free. Or um, if you use my digital channels, if, for example, the client is a bank, you, you, it will be hassle-free. And I mean, right now, who wants to walk into a banking hall? You want, we want, we, uh, we, we call it the soft life. We, we like easy things. <laughs> we want easy, we want, we want easy. nobody wants to be stressed seriously. So you, they can be able to tell such things. So for me, honestly, it's the, the different aspects of each industry that excites me. Mm. Such that um, on a different day, I would have dealt with, let's say, six different brands six different industries, I would have learned a new thing. Today, I've just learned about the 60-40 rule from myself, <laughs> which I didn't know. So at least tomorrow when I'm having a conversation, I can tell people, you know, there's this 60 <laughs> I love that. <laughs> there's 60-40. <laughs> uh -huh. And, you know, so you're learning different things every day as you go along. The, and that's for me is the fun part, the exciting part. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and I also learned the 60-40. I knew, I knew there was blind tasting, but I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. I didn't know 60 what, of what your percentage. Uh -huh. Exactly. I didn't know what the percentage was as well. Just like now I know. Yeah. So they do get, blind tasting. Yeah, yeah. So if you get an 80%, then you are through the roof. <laughs> Yeah. Ready to hit the market. Is it possible to, to get 100%? <laughs> oh, I, no, I, don't, I don't think we'll I don't give a 100% so. with it. Okay. Maybe no, you, you, you can come close. But yeah. anything above 60% means it is. And actually, even if it was 62, 65, what it means is it's good to go to the market. Mm. And you will constantly be tasting to ensure that the formulation of the product meets consumer expectations. So yeah. you can keep, you know, improving, improving it. On That's it. the exciting yeah. bit about it because you don't stop because I put this product, you know, on the market. You keep um, refining and improving it. Fantastic. Okay. So um, having, having set uh, some of the things that we do, mm. um, I know that part of uh, ad advertising or, in fact, sorry, marketing we have different parts, including PR, we have um, pure advertising, we have consumer um, 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 services, services yeah. and so on and so forth. 
Now, if we decide that we are going to, we, we, we want to stay with the service marketing mm -hmm. and we go to our clients, how do we ensure that the, the advertisement or whatever we bring out will tell the story about the value of what our product brings to them? Okay, so um, Comfort, I, I find I call myself a storyteller because as a... Storytelling. Yes, because as a brand's person, what really do I have to tell you to have a preference of my product mm -hmm. over competition? Mm -hmm. It is what I'm telling you about my product or my service. Mm -hmm. That's the story I have to tell you and that's what I'll craft in my message. And my message will have to give you the benefits or what I call the raison d'etre, the reason mm -hmm. for choosing my product over another, you know, uh, uh, company's um, product. Yeah. And therefore, there will be, you know, some variables. What is this product or service that I'm offering to you? What is it going to do for you? Now, how have I crafted this such that when you read that message, you are able to immediately think, okay, I think this would work for me. And also, I'm not going to share the message only on one medium. That's the thing about branding, the consistency in ensuring that there's alignment with all your channels. What I say internally but mm -hmm. don't forget that my internal colleagues actually are my first brand advocates. They are my brand ambassadors first. Yeah. So what am yeah. I saying internally mm -hmm. as an organization? What am I saying to my external you know, customer through pure advertising? And then when it comes to even my thought leadership platforms, what am I saying? How am I representing that service or that brand? Mm -hmm. And then to my PR, mm -hmm. what am I saying there? So all my channels... I must speak with some consistency mm -hmm. so that if you're a consumer, you find me consistent enough. The question is, it's only not the message. Okay. What when else? I say that I'm promising you this, what are my proof points? Mm -hmm. When you use that service, is this going to meet my brand promise? That's the proof point. That is a proof point. That, that, yes. So it means that all my communication, if when I go to an absurd right, yes, and you tell me that your 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 products, uh, when I go there, let's say you have a new product and this product would make me rich, mm -hmm. and when I get there, I don't. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> after using it for some time, proving it for some time, my that my organization promise is bringing your possibilities to life. And then my brand promise is to help you get things done. So with that helping you get things done, I must use my products and my services to help you comfort get things done. Mm -hmm. Now, so when you experience any Including service... Including going to school or maybe opening <laughs> a new, a new um, yes, branch yes. or something yeah. like that. Yes. That's your brand promise. And I've gone yes. there, I've saved with you. Uh -huh. Okay, so but because you always keep your promise, I know it would work. So Emma, in, your, in this case, we, she has promised us, you know, that she'll get things done for us. Yeah. And then someone goes there and unfortunately there's a disconnect between the service that was provided mm -hmm. for whatever reason mm -hmm. and uh, the person, let's say, you know, nowadays we have a lot of digital marketing. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. How do you, I'll presume that she's your client. Let's mm -hmm. presume she is your client. Mm -hmm. How do you then help her get the promise and the action together? Okay. In, you, in your space? So she has this product, she has mm -hmm. the services, and mm -hmm. she has various um, consumers, or let's call them audience. It's different audiences that you're reaching out to. So you know not one product or service is for everybody. Yeah. So you need to understand your consumer's needs. Mm -hmm. Definitely there's a reason why um, Esilfo has launched a particular product yeah. because she has done her research mm -hmm. and realized that it's needed. Yeah. However, not by everybody. Okay. So it means she will also have to have another product okay. which will meet the needs of other people. So one, is it meeting everybody's needs? In the messaging, 
how are they receiving the message? And the people who are, not everybody can, let's say, see it on social media channels, see it on TV, or hear it on radio. Um, there are people who believe in watching it on TV. But it's not everybody who can hear what they're saying. So, for example, if um, there's an advert showing on, on TV, how, how is the consumer receiving it? You know, sometimes you, you're watching an advert and you can just, even when you mute, if you remove the volume, you can see how happy the people are. Yeah, you can yeah. say, oh, it means it's a good product. Just by that happiness that they're exhibiting, you can see it's a good product, right? Mm -hmm. So it means that there's something that you want to try. Who are the people speaking for you? Sometimes we believe a lot in, if comfort is using it, comfort is my friend, let me give it a try. <laughs> Word of mouth. Okay. Your ambassadors, yeah. brand ambassadors. Yeah. I know you said we'll talk about digital later, but we're coming to the yeah. to the to the Just end of you know like mm. ambassadors, and that's why we are saying people should be able to promote your product mm. so that if somebody who is influential speaks about why I should drink this coffee over this coffee, I'll be able to do it. You know. So who are you using to reach out to these people? So she said different channels, and these are some of the channels that we will advise mm -hmm. if um, a silver is our client that let's adopt various channels because we have different consumers. We have people who are um, in the rural areas, they will not understand our advert in English. Let's say it to them in that the language they understand. So that, you know, like it's in the local language, it speaks exactly to them and they know exactly what they want. So that's another medium. Taking your advert to the right people in the language they understand in the with the visuals that they want to see mm -hmm. with the excitement that they are receiving it mm -hmm. so i think that is what i would ad ad advise her to to go about it mm -hmm. so then if i one of my key takeaways from what you just said is to say that understanding my consumer as i mean when, when you're marketing your goods understanding my consumer is really yeah, very important key. yes in, in making sure that my message is good to go. Yeah, yeah. that's you true. Say and um, I'll tell you a story okay. uh, about uh, this. Imagine um, flying out, going through uh, Cameroon and landing in uh, Congo. Okay. And then going by speedboat mm. to the next country, which is just 12 minutes by speedboat. Okay. So I mean from Kinshasa to Brazzaville. Okay. And uh, what, I'm do what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm actually going into people's homes, doing pantry checks. Pantry checks? Yes, and I'll tell you why, about the power of having good consumer insight. Okay. Mm. Going into people's homes, looking at what we call the LSM, the living standard measurement, and seeing if I'm dealing with the fives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they live? What mm -hmm. do they keep in their refrigerator? What do they keep in their cupboards? Mm -hmm. um, how do they eat? How do, and I spend whole days with families. I go to the market with them. I want to see their disposable income. How do they shop? So when they buy seasoning, for instance, when I was handling Maggie, mm -hmm. I just want to now understand that how do you use your Maggie? In fact, we were handling the tablets. Okay. Why did we come to the powder for? We realized that some people feel it was a drudgery to pick the foil, <laughs> yeah, right? But it's interesting, the two the school of thoughts. So they, they prefer the granular one, that's the powder, so they can just use a spoon to scoop. Mm. Then you realize that when um, you have the insights about the chopper owner, they count because they don't want pilfering. Yeah. Okay. And therefore, <laughs> the tablet the works work. so they yeah. know once they take the pack that is 60, they can it should last so for this long. Or, or yeah. they can give it to the girls and then they know they can count. So I'm just telling you about the power of having consumer insight because I was also um, partly responsible for R&D. So I was doing a lot of trips into Cote d'Ivoire. But I was going into Kenya because we're going uh, into Congo because we're going to um, no, actually establish a factory in there. Mm. But we wanted to understand the how there. the typical... Congo Lee's woman, especially in Braza, just cooked. And it was interesting what I found out, um, um, Comfort, that when they have breakfast with the man of the house mm -hmm. at about 8.30, 9.00 and he goes off to work, nobody in the family eats until he's back from work. 
Seriously, wow. I am I am Lubumbashi. So the whole day is on the English part. <laughs> and the border well, the whole day because he's out of the house. Wow. Yes, but that's culture. And so mm-hmm. then you understand how they cook. Yeah. So yeah. they spend the whole afternoon. The, 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 the woman goes to, uh, to shop, mm-hmm. brings the ingredients and start the preparation by the time the kids come from school. And it's waiting close to the time where the husband comes and cooks. Mm-hmm. And so you want to understand how do they use your product? When That's the only use? way I can now message properly yeah. to such a woman because I know how she uses the product. When she uses when it. When she uses it and also. And then also things that over my time, I'm just happy to have been across this journey because I've learned so much. Consumer behavior, shopper inside, just standing in a shop all day observing shoppers' attitude. Those who pick the box first, the food, mm-hmm. look at it. Take the smaller SKUs and look probably comprising of price and say, let me put a big one down, let me take the small one. <laughs> and after when you interview them on their exit, exit yeah. then you realize that's a price point thing. I can't afford the 60, let me buy maybe the SKUs 20. of yeah. 20 or 10, mm. and I'll come back I'll later. Come back you know, so this is the power of having good consumer inside. It helps you tailor made your products, you know, and you messaging right, right yeah. to your audience. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen watching us today, I, it's my privilege to bring to you Nana Esofwa, <laughs> Tamaklo, and Emma Wenani. They are telling, telling us one of the things that is my key takeaway for today is that I have to know you so well. I think well, that's, that, that was one of the things that pushed, pushed us to go to, the, to do the Springboard Dialogues over the past two weeks, to mm. know our clients Good. even better. And mm. we have Mami Araba Nyakwa saying, hello, I'm watching from... Domi Pillar 2, bless you. <laughs> and thank you for, for watching the, the Mami Araba. And then Efia B says, I'm joining from East Legon. Thank you for being with us <laughs> from East Legon. And Teresa Amwate, you are also in East Legon. I think today East Legon is winning the, the prize. <laughs> and Asiedun George, Emmanuel is from KNUST, joining us live. Emma is, uh, Teresa is in my team. Oh, Teresa is in your oh, Teresa, thank you. I, 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 send me a private message. To let me know whether he's a, she's a good boss. <laughs> okay, then it will be just between the two of us. And Akosia Buaji is watching from Roman Rich. Thank you for watching us, Akosia. And we have Lizzie Dan, who is from um, Osu. Now, there's a question to you from um, Kofi and Kumasi. When we come to the, when we come back, I'll right. I'll, I'll, watch, I'll ask you about that. And Eugenia Sam is watching from Amasaman, also watching you. Eugene and then Michael, my team. pardon, he's also in your team. <laughs> hey, today the, the team members the team are, have, are, have come in plenty. <laughs> I, I know, right? And Michelle Tamaklo is joined, also joining from East Lagos. So another That's team member. That's my daughter. Yeah, there's a daughter. Oh, okay, Michelle, you are most welcome. We love you too. And Eugene Assem says, great, great insights from Nana. And um, Echo Pansa, you also say, wow, great insights. Um, Echo Kof- is from my team. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you, 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 team members, you rock. You rock. Thanks for making it. Thank you making for Making their, their days um, so, so beautiful yeah. today. And Judith, uh, Marilyn Adamwa, Ad- Adamwa, sorry, Dumwa, you are watching from Adenta. Um... Um, um, Ma, not Emmanuel, but Kofi from Kumasi mm-hmm. is saying that how do you measure the 60 40 during product t- testing? I use it as a percentage. Normally, when you're doing sampling, you have tasters. Mm-hmm. Even uh, in consumer marketing, you have what we call permanent tasters, and then you have the random ones. Okay. So I can use permanent for quick testing. But if I'm going out to launch a product, it's in my interest, apart from my regular tasters, to bring random. And so if I bring 100 of them and you taste my product blind, which means I switch the labeling and you wouldn't know whether this is ideal milk or peak or, you know, I have to mention the, you know, or milo or, you know, chocolate or etc. When you taste it blind, I'm expecting like 60% of them. So it's a percentage of the mm. number of tasters that I bring that I want 60% of them to say they prefer my taste profile. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, Michelle has responded and said thank you. And gave (laughs) you so sweet laughter. Thank you so much. And Malcolm Akaba also says that very insightful. 
Right, at this moment, if you don't mind, please stay there, call a friend. But we're going for a quick break, and we are going to, we are going to want a game changer break. And when we return, we'll give a quick comment about that. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. For so long, we've been here. I don't know how Jojo was peeping into our conversation because he's actually talked about the same thing about COVID. I was, yeah, I was just like, about to say that. I was like, this is so in tune with exactly what we're talking about. Yes, yes. <laughs> he should tell us his secret. <laughs> how did he know? <laughs> exactly. How did he know? You know, oh. nowadays there's this whole artificial intelligence. You know, mm -hmm. have you ever been, um, maybe you're looking for a vacation place to go to Mauritius and mm -hmm. then that week you'll be getting Mauritius houses over and over again. That's artificial intelligence. I tell They're you. in our brains. Jojo. He knows it. <laughs> Jojo is in our brains. <laughs> and the funny thing, I mean, just today I was look, I was I, I just called someone's name and then I looked it up and then they were showing me where the person worked. And I was like, no, I, I was I was thinking about it. I didn't exactly. mean that's that's, 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 that's where we are now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when we, when we return, um, we have Akosia from uh, Akosia Buajua. You are from Roman Ridge, and we have um, if you are busy saying getting things done. Hashtag fantastic, <laughs> and we have Marilyn from Adenta as well. And Salome, now you are watching us from Adesu in Oforidua. Oh wow. Yes. <laughs> and Theresa is saying I'm learning from both. Thank you, Isilfwa and Emma. <laughs> yes, yeah, so much. Oh, oh, Theresa has given you props. She says that I, I'm glad to work with and learn from the great boss. <laughs> Please, this one, when we get to the office. Um, some you know. small bonus. Thank you. <laughs> some, some, some small idea. <laughs> Yes, 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 indeed. Okay, so let's 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 now we've we've looked at um our eight uh, sixty forty. Mm -hmm. We've looked at um, the need for us to look at our consumer very well. Mm -hmm. Now we have done all that. We've 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 done all the best marketing that we know what to do uh, through the whole gamut, and then something doesn't gel very well, mm -hmm. and we kind of in a crisis moment. How do we, what do we do about crisis marketing, or well, how do we do that? Okay, so typically, what you would describe as a, a crisis, if it were to happen in the bank, mm -hmm. normally we've got a crisis management team. So immediately, 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 we will gather together. Now, once we gather together, everybody has a role. Remember, I'm a communicator, so mm -hmm. I am there, mm -hmm. so that looking at the technical, and I'm not a t the technical person. So let's say our systems have gone down or maybe our ATM you know, is malfunction, et cetera. Don't forget, I'll have my colleague, Ebo Richardson, in the room talking to us about the actual, pro the actual problem yeah. that we're facing. Yeah. Um, and then also the degree of the issue, yeah. you know, how concerned we must be, et cetera. Is there any financial loss to us? Then the risks, I have my risks. So as a collective together, led by Abna, the managing director. So immediately we'll hone in and identify the issue. Mm -hmm. Then we will have our actions panning out. Because personally, if I have to communicate something to the audience, what would that be initially? It might be a holding statement. Because at that time, maybe we have not really gone to the bottom of the issue. Yeah. Because there's also uh, nothing as bad as communicating too quickly and wrongly yeah. to your consumers because mm -hmm. then you're going to regret it. So you first must understand the issue. So at the moment, we will acknowledge that there is a problem. We are getting into it. And then we'll come back to you shortly with an update. And boy, when you promise, you must go back. Yeah. Because the consumer is trusting you to come back. Okay. with an update. Don't forget, as I say, it's the consumer that pays me. Mm. So if my consumer is not happy with our service and I've promised that I'll come back, I will come back. But this in general, and then if it's either the next two hours we identify what it is, we will go back. And if we manage to resolve it at the end of the day, we will go back to our consumers or our customers and then tell them that that issue that happened has been resolved. Each time, of course, we are apologizing. 
to ensure that, you know, they do know that it's unintended, but we do know they would have gone through some discomfort or, you know, discomfort mm -hmm. source, and therefore we do apologize. Yes. So, Winona, it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, comfort have simplified it. Normally in the room, you know, you it's, have... It's so different. The, it's so different. Yeah. You, know, you feel the heat. The heat is coming from all, all, all places. Angles. Because Especially... in my space, mm -hmm. once all decisions have been taken, now you go craft and move. Yeah. So do you, yeah. do you understand how when everybody has finished loading you, this is the actual issue, this is the, the technical issue, this is... This, 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 this. You go craft so that and, we go and, on. And, so and, now and that's where you must, you must be able to ensure that the various consumer points are touched. Mm -hmm. That's right. With the right messaging. At that's the right. right. So time. you might do social media to ensure that the audience that consume information on social media. And anyway, now social media is such that with all channels, even when you use it, you will want to be on social, on social media. Yeah. Because if a damage is going to happen to you, the greatest you're going to find it on uh, social media because you cannot control conversations True. so emma yes she has attempted to wrap us <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are looking at that communication and they go they've they've they've, they've solved it mm -hmm. and they've come to tell us the good news yet as a consumer i am maybe i'm, I'm uh, uh, when when it happened I was, the only, I was the only person, so I don't have that kind of voice that they have. Yeah. So as a young organization watching this particular program, mm -hmm. how do I craft my message such that I can also, if I face such a problem as they are facing, mm -hmm. I can also be, 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 tell my audience, my consumers, how, how to, to go hold about on. it. Okay, so let me take you back a little bit okay. to something she mentioned, the importance of a crisis management team. But I'm just, we are just three in the company. Still, okay. those three, you mm -hmm. have to give them rules. Okay. So comfort, you mm -hmm. will be the spokesperson. Okay. You are the only one who will speak to the media. A silver and Emma, you won't speak to the media. Emma, you will deal with the internal employees. Let's, let's assume we are 10 at least. No, no, no. no. We're, no, <laughs> we're, no we're still three. We're not going okay. about, about We're still three. going to be three. Okay, so the, the it's internal... It's a lean team. It's a very lean team, clearly. Okay, so I will deal, let's say, with the internal. So each, the three people, let us let me just simplify it. Give each of them what they're supposed to do. Okay. But it should be very important that there's only one spokesperson who is trained. 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 Mm -hmm. You have to say the right thing to the media or to your external stakeholders. Your stakeholders could be the media, your shareholders, your consumers, people who um, are passing by could be your stakeholders, right? Yeah. So you want only one person because there's always that tendency of having different messages. Mm -hmm. So you want the message to be the same. You don't want two people saying different things and then it's like, ah, but she said so and so. Secondly, you don't have to communicate immediately. Sometimes saying things too fast could work to your disadvantage. Mm. Weigh the situation. There's something we call a risk matrix. So if the risk of not communicating is high, then you might have to say, okay, so how do we communicate? If it's low, it means you have more time to communicate and therefore you can vary the angles that you take, right? Sometimes saying nothing will also just make things a little bit better. Now you, the consumer, is you have seen that there's something wrong with company X that you're a consumer of and you want, you're want you wondering why they're not saying anything to you mm -hmm. and you're worried about it. Yeah. The reason why you're a consumer of company X perhaps is because you have used them over the years and they have not disappointed you. Okay. Sometimes it's not easy to avoid crisis. Crisis can come from different angles. Mm -hmm. You have competition. They can build crisis for you. So if I have served you for a long time and you trust in what I'll be able to do, why not? Your customer relations, when the consumer calls company X, what are they going to be told? Mm. Will they be spoken to in a way that they will understand that we are trying to deal with this issue? Mm -hmm. Or will they be told, we'll get back to you? You know, we'll get back to you is very vague. <laughs> Will you get back to me tomorrow? Are you telling me you don't know what is going on and therefore, you know, so that can actually aggravate the situation. Yeah. So even that message, when people start calling, what is happening? 
it's so important. Remember when mm-hmm. we had the banking crisis in mm-hmm. Ghana yeah. a while back? Yeah. And, you know, Bank A is being closed. Now you're wondering, is my next? Yeah. Should I go take my money yeah. and uh, remove it from this bank? And, you know, the, the governor said, no, we are doing everything possible to ensure that your money is safe. That was important because keeping, we know, keeping your money with you is not safe. The place where you're keeping it is not insured. But here is a, a stakeholder who has come and said, this is what is happening. We're going to ensure that your money is safe. That gives you some sort of comfort. Yeah. Uh, comfort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you some sort of comfort. You might not believe it, but it gives you some sort of comfort. Yeah, and sure. I like what Esufa said, keep updating them. Okay. When there's a crisis and then you go silent, especially mm-hmm. when you make the first communication, mm-hmm. it means there has to be continuous updates until it is resolved or until the matter has reached a point where the consumers feel comfortable and they're okay with it, you know. And if, you know, there are certain consumers that you know you need to actually speak to them one-on-one, mm. it's necessary. Mm. So, uh, so let's bring this home to, let's say, a watch seller. Okay. Who, for some reason, somebody puts the wrong thing in the food mm-hmm. and there's, a, let's say, um, an upset. Food tummies. poisoning or something. Yes, yeah, yeah. food poisoning. In this case, the watch seller, well, seller's uh, clients are from desperate areas. You, mm-hmm. don't, you may not even have access to them. Yeah. How can this watch seller... No, no. What happened? Who, who to contact to say that mm. um, I, you, you had this problem from my meal? Forgive. Well, that might be a difficult situation, but mm-hmm. what they can do? Why can't they put a poster mm-hmm. on their, uh, let's say, kiosk? Yeah. And say that on this date we got a, a few complaints from some of our consumers who bought the watch, and they said that they had X, Y, Z, and they got food poisoning. Um, we've looked at the matter and maybe we've seen that perhaps there was something wrong with the food. What we're going to do this Saturday, we'll give you, uh, we won't give you free watch, but we'll give you, once you buy watch, we'll give you Gary for free. Okay. You know, something to spice up and let them know that you care. Okay. It's, it's, it's better than, no, it wasn't my watch. Are you sure you didn't go and buy somebody else's watch? <laughs> <laughs> I cut you, please yeah. forgive me. No, no, no. It's, it, it's just to, to latch on the point that um, um, Emma was making about when you have uh, customer loyalty. Um, you know, loyalty grows over time. Mm-hmm. I don't get to know your product or your service today, and then I build a, I go on a, a journey, a consumer journey with you. So I remember in my previous life, um, somebody has a coagulation with maybe a, a, a tin of milk. At that time, we were doing the 96, if you do remember, the 96 box. So one tin, you make a consumer complaint and we'll bring you the whole 96 box. Wow. Why do we do this? And in other situations, yeah. somebody has asked me before that, so if my money goes this time, will you bring me a whole wad of cash? <laughs> <laughs> And that's the beauty and the difference between <laughs> tangible and intangible. I know, right? True. So we bring you the 96. But what are we saying? We're saying that not we're sorry, we mm-hmm. apologize, mm-hmm. we recognize the issue, mm-hmm. we value you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just that one individual, because you know, word of mouth is extremely powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So we say we're sorry, we do recognize the issue, and to make amends. And in, in such cases, we drive ourselves to your home yeah. Yeah. and present that and spend time with you. And it, actually through that, you get to understand a little bit of the customer life cycle. Mm-hmm, you get yeah. to know them a little yeah. even better, yeah. Yeah. you know, just so you feedback. can yeah. understand. And because you've complained, you've actually given us good feedback. Mm-hmm. So we fix whatever it is, maybe it's a particular batch mm-hmm. that must have gone wrong or something. In the same way in the, in the bank. If there's a failed service, we do acknowledge, we do apologize, and sometimes we visit our customers at home just so you know we can get to have a closer relationship, discuss the issue, and also make amends. Sometimes we take a hamper of something, mm. and also sometimes it could be either a service that we want to give. You know, we have so many things that we can offer 
as even some of them are, are items, branded items, etc., etc. But I think the most important thing is not to shy away if a mistake or an error has happened. Yeah, not to because we, it's, it a, it's a human society yeah. Yeah. and errors and mistakes do happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But what do you do to recover, to recover mm -hmm. when it happens? That's the most important thing so that you can maintain or retain your relationship with your consumers. True. Fantastic. What do you do? So on the note of what do you do, mm -hmm. Emma, we have recovered, we've, we've attempted to recover the clients. What, and we, the, I think they are getting on our side. Okay. And so we have to now send some new messaging out. Mm -hmm. What kind of digital, so now we come to our digital marketing <laughs> area, <laughs> what kind of digital marketing um, tools or marketing um, strategies can we add? So um, a lot of brands right now have social media presence. So they have their presence on um, Facebook. Right now we're even live on Facebook. Yes, we are live. <laughs> um, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So, and you have different consumers who are on these different platforms. One, understand where your consumer is coming from. Because you might be trying to use digital, but they're not on digital. Okay. Mm -hmm. So understand where consumer X is coming from. So let's say they're coming from digital. Therefore, your messaging has to be there, right? And sometimes after a particular crisis, it, you don't have to keep going back to that same issue. It's like you're rehashing it what about the other good things that you, do you as a brand is doing? Talk about them, right? Um, create an avenue where the consumer mm -hmm. can interact with, let's say, your customer relation team and just ask them questions and feel like they're being listened to. Okay. And then at the end of that, maybe a, a, a new product will come out of that conversation. Um, conversation, which is like a thought leadership conversation. Yeah. So, you know, people want to feel like they're contributing, they're being heard right so there is social media what campaign can you do out of it right mm. so we see a lot of um, campaigns on social media where a, a product is being launched um, you're using a couple of influencers as your ambassadors or you're having a webinar to talk about um, something you know last last week the country was planting trees Yes, yes. And it, it was on social media. Everybody was planting and saying, mm -hmm. I've planted my tree. Have you planted yours? It was a conversation that people wanted to be part. So run that campaign and let your consumers want to be part. The only way they can want to be part is if they believe in it. Yeah. Right? If they feel that it, it actually meets their needs, they can contribute to it, then they can join the campaign. They can be part of the conversation. Make it something that is... Um, relevant mm. as well. Because mm. sometimes you might you might be doing something, you're seated um, in your office. Uh, you know, a lot of us mm -hmm. corporates mm -hmm. sit in our office and we feel like <laughs> the game changer. We feel like this is what we should do. <laughs> but no, it's, it's really not what people need. Yeah. So yeah. make it relevant to exactly what people need. And your consumer loyalty, uh, they'll come back to you. They'll come back yeah. to you. I Just like pray that. that your competition doesn't create Catch something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bigger and then... <laughs> They because go there instead. In truth, sometimes the cost of switch yeah. is high. It's, it's, yeah. it's so if you are able to maintain an existing customer, it's cheaper mm -hmm. yes. than to recruit a new customer. Yes. Yes. So yes. Um, it's important to do your very best, you know, um, to retain your customer. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so um, in, we, unfortunately, once again, we've come to the part that I don't like. <laughs> The fact that the program is the time is almost Aww. gone, you know. So, so, um, um, Dana, let me let me let me find out from you, or more like you share with us. So, we have had a fantastic um, consumer, the person has enjoyed our products over and over again. We've created conversations, we're on the same boat with them, mm -hmm. and we even have brought up new products for them, and they are really enjoying it. How would you, in the case where this week, or I mean, Ronaldo, when we take the Ronaldo issue <laughs> with Coke, <laughs> with with Coke, oh gosh, how do we ensure that um, as a brand we are able to respond in a positive way, mm -hmm. positive in quotes, mm -hmm. because we've lost some money? Yeah. 
how do we respond in a positive way to somebody who we may have seen as a potential brand ambassador that doesn't say didn't tell our story that we would have loved? Um, let me pick it from the Ronaldo story, for instance. Sometimes either you're saying something, mm -hmm. you're saying it right, or you say it in the simplest way not to go on and on. Because I keep saying that consumers are just like you and I. Yeah. They can read in between the lines. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore, do you have a message? If it's a, it's a service that has gone wrong, how do I recover? And that's why now CRM, you know, is very important. What is because CRM? <laughs> that's my relationship management. You know, ensuring that I maintain good relationships and I must have different channels of communicating to you. You know, Emma says something about social media. Mm. There are times things can spiral. If you play in the social media game and you, you don't manage it, things just spiral out because sometimes I think even out of boredom, everybody's on commenting and people feed on negative information. Exactly. And therefore, do you have a positive message for me? Mm. That's why I can write to you an email mm -hmm. personally so you can read it. As a customer, if there's a failed service, um, that's why I can call you. That's why I can visit you. Because, you know, advertorials are for public, and it's almost um, what I call, it's a poster. It's speaking to you, but it's not personal mm -hmm. yet. So I can put that out, but I want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one through the different channels that uh, I have engaged. Yeah. And that's why I say when you are in certain organizations like mine, you're actually sitting on a gold mine and that's data. Mm. I have data. So what are you doing with that data? Because that data, they are your consumers. <laughs> yeah. So it's how you mine that data and how, how you, you use, use it. it. Yeah. You know, and you can use it to your advantage so that you stay very close to your Customers, True. we must use our data to our advantage. So, yes. Emma, it's a gold we, mine. It's a gold <laughs> mine. <laughs> Emma, as we as we mine our gold here as mm -hmm. on the Springboard Hangout, what will be your final um, words to our, our consumers today? To our consumers, um, or to our viewers? To our viewers, okay. Our viewers can be both the brand and the consumers. <laughs> so, for the for, let me start with the brands. I think I can't emphasize enough the importance of knowing your customer needs okay yeah and going back you know you might have you might have known their needs in january in june they might have changed unfortunately it, it happens so it doesn't you have to keep your r d going people change their minds on certain things so it has yeah. to be going so know your customer needs for the consumers don't be afraid to contribute to, you know, we, sometimes we get these surveys that uh, brands are trying to push out and we feel, ah, they're just disturbing me. You know, don't be afraid to contribute to it because your thoughts matter. This is, you know, you always see it and you're like, uh, but this is very important because mm -hmm. when we contribute our thoughts, mm -hmm. it helps the brands mm -hmm. become better exactly. at what they do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So two things. Know your consumers and consumers, when they ask us, let's give yeah. our, our, our thoughts so that it can be used to make better products for exactly. us. Exactly. Emma, any final words from you? Oh, sorry. Yes. It's, it's, it's so far. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So typically for us in brands and marketing, we are now not even necessarily waiting only to hear from you. What we're doing is to actually studying your trends your habits and your behaviors, because we must almost be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. We must anticipate okay. what you're going to need, mm -hmm. you know, in the next couple of years mm -hmm. to ensure that by the time you even realize you need it, we are we there. Something. So you see, I've come back once again to consumer insight. It's important what I'm doing it now or I'm trying to work ahead of the curve is very, very important. And also bring, uh, uh, building a brand is not just the logo. It's not just it's actually living that promise and the proof points. It's what I can really give to you so you believe in my... It's not the, the, the mark, it's not the logo, it's not the tagline. Once I share tagline with you, do I have the proof points to make sure those taglines are true and are actually meeting your expectations? 
20 years <laughs> in brands of marketing put together, you've got almost 30 years here, <laughs> and there's so much we have learned from the two of you. Thank, thank you, Nana Isofa, for coming, and then thank you, Emma. Thank you for also having for, us. For making thank time you for, for having us. Here. And thank you, um, EWN, for giving us such wonderful <laughs> ladies to learn about marketing and communications from them. I would like to thank you for joining us today as well. I mean, to, to, we, we've had a great time. Um, don't forget to join us on Sunday when we have first, we first will be watching this on ETV again. We'll be, please join us during that period. And also, Albert will be coming your way with the top 10. Um, and this time, the final edition has the one and only, the life of the guitar band um, tradition, Eja Konimo. He'll be sharing wow. his first part of his top 10 with us. Don't miss that edition. It promises to be so exciting. And um, uh, my production team, thank you so much for being phenomenal as well. For those who would like to check, get in touch with me, please don't. Um, uh, my number is 0544315161. Or you can join me on my social media handles, Comfort Ekran A, either on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And you can also send me an email at Comfort. Okran A. So till we come your way again next week, be phenomenal as always and have a fantastic week. By the way, as I said, next week is my birthday. So we have God. God bless you and good night. For so long, we've been